Okay, guys, I don't know. Um, let me know if I'm picky here, but I'm still playing around with this G, J, J, N, G, G, J, N, G, E, J, N, G, E, that's correct. J, N, G, E, M, P, P, T, charge controller I have bought recently. I'm, I'm not going to do a full review on this controller here. I'm, I'm not doing reviews on this channel here. You know, I'm not doing any unboxing stuff or... I hate this when people, you know, they've got this overhead shot here from above. And then they've got this little box here and turn it around 17 times and read what's on the box. And then they're slowly unwrapping and unpacking and show you all the manual stuff in there and show you the product. This is so boring. I'm not doing this shit here. As always, I'm sharing my experience with this stuff rather. So I've got this hooked up now to my 220 watt solar panel there on the roof. And I'm charging this 4S lithium pack with it. And the app is connected to it. This is all fine and good. But have a look. It shows me the V bat. It shows me the V, v bat. So that's the battery voltage of 13 volts right 13 volts okay the battery is connected here bed plus bed minus these are my two connections and i've also connected some other leads so i can measure the voltage directly at the terminals because these terminals these screws are so deep inside the actual enclosure here none of my probe can reach the contact at the bottom i cannot get the probe in here either so hence i've got these additional cables and this measures a voltage of 13.315. And we also have the cell meter connected and this shows us 13.30 volts for the 12 volt pack. Uh, we are not charging at the moment, so the solar panel is still turned off. Just in case you're wondering, there is no voltage drop. And even then, it wouldn't make, it wouldn't make sense that the solar charge controller measures a lower voltage than the battery if we have voltage drop. It should be the other way around. You should have a higher voltage here and then you lose voltage if a current flows until your battery. But this one is the other way around. We've got more voltage here than the charge controller knows about. So what happens if you set a threshold is say if you want to charge your battery to 14.6 volts which is 3.65 per cell maximum times four for this pack. And it charges the battery, keeps charging until it thinks we have got 14.6 volts, but we have actually 14.9 volts on the battery. So we are overcharging our cells, right? Just a little tiny bit, but we are overcharging it. 13.36, 13.35, directly measured here at the battery. So this one is very precise here actually. See that the one for $11, guys, I don't like that. I don't like this at all. Why is this one not measuring the voltage correctly at the terminals? This measures correctly, but the $120 MPPT controller here does not. So what is going on? All right, and this is the charge current, 10 amps it measures at the moment. Okay, 11.5, 11, we've got 10.8 here, so that is not too bad. I'm not too worried about the current, actually. The current is not too important, but the voltage needs to be correct. The battery itself will not stop charging or slow down charging if the voltage is too high. It just keeps charging. The voltage measurement in this device needs to be very accurate at the terminals at least. And then we have a lower voltage at the battery level because of the voltage drop in the cables, which is fine. And now it has switched to float charge. And I don't really quite understand how this setup all works here. You can go into the settings and see all these voltages. They've got funny names here like over pressure voltage. And then you've got your charging limit voltage. And the improved charging voltage is the bulk charge or equalization charge voltage. I've set this one to, I don't know what that means, 13.6 volts, which is uh, 3.4 per cell. Is that correct? 
So I want to charge each cell to a 3.4 volts maximum, which is about 80%, maybe 85. And then there is an improved charging back voltage. I think this is when the bulk charge kicks in again. So it charges until 13.6, then stops the charge because the bulk charge is reached and it will kick in the charging again at 13.4 volts. We hit the 13.6 volts and the controller switches to float charging. Float charging. Again, settings are 13.6 for bulk, 13.4 for float charging. And now the controller measures 13.3. Should it not go back to bulk charging again now because it's under the 13.4 or am I missing something here? At, at, least, at least this is how the PWM controller works when I set bulk and flow charging. But this one seems to work differently or maybe not working at all, I don't know. See, this is all weird, right? This does not make sense to me. It, it looks like the controller does not work along the settings I've put in. Or am I doing something wrong? I don't know. But it looks like it's it's kicking in randomly again and then recharges the battery on MPPT mode or in bulk mode. But how is this supposed to work? And then guys, I had this AGM 12 volt battery here, 7.2. This is my test battery here on the workbench. I had this one connected to the MPPT charge controller and used both the 220 watt panel and also one of the 40 watt panels here to charge this battery. And the controller totally freaked out. So this is my current setup, charge controller. This is the battery. There's no load connected. It's turned off and we can see the charging has just stopped for some reason. And then after a couple of seconds, charging continues. Charging stops. Yeah, this was the video I've sent them and I said, look, this is what's happening. What is going on? And they come back with me and said, okay, f the 40 watt panel is too small. Please use a bigger panel to charge this battery. I cannot use a bigger panel for this battery. It will overcharge the battery. This is only 1.8 amps max for this AGM battery here. And I cannot use a 220 watt panel and charge it with 15 amps or so. It will blow up my battery. I don't quite think they did understand what this all means and then they told me I've got a faulty battery I should use another battery. So first they claimed a 40 watt panel is not enough to use this charge controller with this battery and then they said my battery is faulty. Well the battery works just fine with all the other charge controllers I have and I never had a problem with this battery. And look at this long conversation trial here on WhatsApp. Which exactly leads me to the positive part of this controller. So this was all the negative stuff I could find so far. I'm not sure if I'm too picky with these devices because they are still Chinese products, you know, and they are not super expensive and they kind of work, but kind of not work correctly. Well, what was the reason then to buy this charge controller? Well, the first one was, of course, the price. It was $110, $120 including shipping from China for a 30 amp 48 volt MPPT charge controller. And the idea was to use this one for my both of the strings here for my 1200 watt solar panels. And the other positive thing is this charge controller comes with three years warranty. That's three times more than everyone else gives you on AliExpress. So I said, well, they must be really confident, right? I had a look at the website as well and there are heaps of specs on there. I missed actually one spec which brings me back to the negative side of this controller, the standby current. The standby current of this controller is 125 milliamps. Yes, 125 milliamps. I checked with the clamp amp meter here as well as with the other multimeter directly in line with the controller. It's 125 milliamps, far too much. So of course the charge controller comes with this nice app here and you can control all these charge controllers you buy from G N J N G E with this app this is just the one which shows up now here 
in my system because I have only one, but all the other ones would be in here as well and I can just see what's going on with these charge controllers. And this is another positive thing. This is all hooked up with a RS with an RS485 port and an Ethernet adapter. This is what I have ordered as well. This is an RS485 to Ethernet adapter and it plugs in with this cable directly into my router. So the app is pretty good. The app is completely in English and everything can be changed and set up. You can see the status of your battery, of your controller, of your load, everything remotely. This works cloud-based and you can also log into a website and control and configure the charge controller from there. So you don't need to be here at home. You can be at work, you can be in, on holiday, you can be anywhere in the world to check on your charge controller and battery status. And the thought behind it was, well, if I really buy five charge controllers for all my five strings of solar panels and I can connect them all to their online service and can manage them through the app and through a website, I am super totally independent of being here, but I can still monitor the whole system and every charge controller individually. And this for a very reasonable price, right? This looked like a very, very good solution. It ticked another box for me to order this. And as you can see here, this is all full metal powder coated metal. There's no actual heat sink. And additionally, they also have an intelligent fan which kicks in if the charge controller gets too hot inside. Okay, I have now removed the four screws. All right, so this is our board for the um, control buttons and panel. And here we are inside the JNGE charge controller, 30 amps. You can see the little fan up here. You can see the inductor and this is the heatsink. Yeah, it looks like the board is high quality. Looks very nice, designed and built. Even this even this bracket here for the RS485 is made out of metal. And here you can see the powder coating of the metal case again of the enclosure. So all in all, I'm very pleased with this quality here, what they are providing. So this is not too bad. I've seen far, far, far worse. Definitely. This is one of the best ones I've ever seen. So another plus, the quality of electronic parts and the build quality is top. And you can also program the main parameters with these buttons here directly on the controller, so you don't need the app. <laughs> and welcome to a sunny, hot Australia, right? <laughs> Just on time, I finished my review here, my experience review with the GNJNGE solar MPPT solar charge controller. And I think if they are going to refine the software, this could be a best-selling product with the app and the connectivity they have. So I hope they keep working on it and I'll do my best and keep pushing them to get this all resolved.